Recently, I hopped a plane to Hungary, a nation classified as only partly free and one American conservatives can't get enough of, maybe because of stuff like this. Today's president in USA is, uh, is it's fake. Joe Biden. Yes. But the thing that united conservatives all over the planet were the culture wars. And at CPAC in Florida, they were fighting hard in their battle against wokeism. Awake, not woke. I mean, awake, not woke would be more along the lines of knowing our history, right? Being awake and because woke is, oh, I know all the bad things and you have to feel some type of way about it and yada, yada, yada. That well, empathy in those Guess things. what? Yeah, I'm not wearing that. You don't need to care about other people. No, I need to care about other people because you can be awake and you can care about other people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but you can still have a backbone about your convictions. Does well, that make sense? No. What is the phrase here? Uh, awake, not woke. That doesn't mean that we want to silence people. That means that we want to be respectful to everybody. This is a, this is a universal respect. Right, you're not, you're not, Regardless. Republican Party is not trying to silence people. No. They're not saying don't say gay. Not at all, as a matter of fact. I mean, they're enacting legislation that says don't say gay. But emotionally, they're not saying that. And while GOP snowflakes complain about silencing, Conservative state legislatures across the country are punishing the LGBTQ community for, you know, existing. And the GOP is now looking to Hungary for inspiration because the woke wars have been raging there since 2010, when the conservative autocrat Viktor Orban took over. He outlawed helping Middle Eastern migrants flee war, the Constitution was amended to make marriage between one man and one woman, and people like children's book editor Boldajar Naji felt the sting of Orban's policies when he published a story that dared to show the world of LGBTQ animals. For example, there is a story about a uh, deer who is uh, a trans boy. He born into a female body and he wants to have antlers as well, like the other guys. Then he realizes that it won't grow. Uh, their friends help him and in the end uh, they made um, antlers from branches. In America, we tell kinder stories about deers. Like deers go out into the woods and their mother gets shot by a hunter. <laughs> yeah, for... Just more kid appropriate yeah. storytelling. But the government reaction turned out to inspire even bigger nightmares than those ghoulish fairy tales. A public shredding by a member of parliament sparked action by Prime Minister Orban. Because of the book, uh, the Prime Minister said that LGBTQ people are harmful for kids. They did the Child Protection Act, which says that you cannot even sell LGBTQ topic books if the shop is in 200 meters from any churches or schools. Priests can't go and find a book like this. They need <laughs> to stay pure and open up the Bible and read stories about 40-year-olds kids, you know, yeah. these are priests, they have to stay moral. This is the kind of law American conservatives would love, as soon as they figure out how far 200 meters is. But Orban's government wasn't just banning books, they also tried to erase the identity of an entire group of people. The Orban government denies the existence and the possibility of uh, existence of trans people, considers this as, um, at best, as an illness, and they insist that there's no such thing as gender and therefore there's no need for gender studies education and abolished gender studies programs. So that gig doesn't exist in Hungary anymore? Nope, not anymore. That's kind of America right now. There's no more racism, so why are we studying it or even looking at its history? Yeah, it is quite reminiscent, I must admit. But gender studies professor Eva Fedor's job wasn't the only one canceled. In fact, all of Central European University, a highly respected international institution in Budapest, was targeted by the Orban administration. Unfortunately, in 2017, the government launched a, a vicious political attack against the university and passed a new piece of legislation which just did not allow the university to function as a university in Budapest anymore. So the university had to pack up, leave this beautiful campus behind and move to Vienna and keep you know, offering the US accredited degrees there. They shipped your job overseas? Well, over the Danube. <laughs> they shipped your job over river. While American conservatives complain about elite liberal academics, Hungarian conservatives literally send them packing. Today, CEU is an empty campus where no learning takes place. So basically, Ohio State. So I'm grabbing my backpack, your rail pass, and motion sickness tablets, and heading to Vienna, home to CEU's new campus, to see what sort of sinister liberal college voodoo their students are up to. Are you guys doing some evil shit here? <laughs> Maybe. Evil I shit. don't know. I mean, what do you mean by evil shit? How would you find it? Like liberal college evil shit. Definitely. Definitely. We like to talk about gender and feminism, and we like to talk about 
liberal values and democracy and... Uh, That's just Brooklyn shit. Well, maybe the Brooklyn shit kind of learned it from all over the world. Appropriating, that's also Brooklyn that's shit. That's also yeah. Brooklyn shit, exactly. What the Orban government did to higher education is a truly harrowing international story. But as an American, I still have one question. How does this affect me? I think when we think about what could happen to American democracy, we lack imagination. We think the only way that it could crumble is if it becomes a civil war like the, the 1800s in America. What does the slide towards authoritarianism look like? And what should we be on the lookout for back in America? You know the story about the frog, that if you put the frog into water and you gently heat the water, the point is that if you're, if you're sliding gradually into something, you barely recognize that you're that you're moving and you, sim you, you just end somewhere. You, ev something, ev things become natural. Things that you would have been unheard of a few years ago become acceptable, natural, the normal part of life. We don't cook frogs, I think that's the French. Chicken sandwiches, that's our thing. So if you could make that metaphor more chicken sandwich based, I think it would really connect to our audience. I'll work on that. Please do. More on this deep fried fall of democracy Thursday. Thank <laughs> you.